In this video, I am doing everything differently. I will give you my conclusion up front and I will show you the final results first. So let's jump into the future. Here I have the five pictures I shot with digital Leica cameras and Leica glass that I edited out of Lightroom with the Dehanter plugin to give them a true film-like look. I'm stunned by the results and the simplicity of achieving them. A few weeks ago, the company Dehancer approached me and asked me if I would be interested in testing out their product. Dehancer is a plugin to color grade digital photos and give them a film-like look. Dehancer provided me with a free license, but did not pay me to do this video. This video is not sponsored. I can say whatever I want. I included chapter marks, so you can jump to the picture or the subject that interests you most. Before I start, I'd like to talk about why I think it's very appealing to have a possibility of being able to get realistic film looks with digital shots. Last year, film photography had a revival. Leica, for example, re-released their M6 film camera. Film rolls are widely available again and the experience of shooting film is something even very successful YouTubers did videos about. A camera like the M6 is something I will maybe look at in the future. At the moment, I'm happy with the digital Leicas I own. The quality of the cameras and the amount of control I have in editing are things I like a lot and give me a lot of opportunities to be creative. What I never was able to accomplish was a really good film look on my digital photos. Of course, I can desaturate, push the highlights, give it a slight green or magenta twist and add some fake grain. I was never happy with the results until now. So let's jump back into the past when I downloaded and installed the Dehancer plugin and tried it out for the first time. So let's go and first download the software. If you go to the Dehancer website, we see that they have several products. They have a video product, they have a photo product, they have an iPhone app. I'm going to talk about that later. Our interest now lies in the photo app. There is a version available for Photoshop, Lightroom Classic, Capture One and Affinity Photo. There's also a version available for DaVinci Resolve. This is more for video. Of course, you can also grade stills in DaVinci Resolve, but uh, I I'm not, I will not recommend doing that. I'm interested in the Lightroom version because this is my app that I work with. If you press here on download and get free trial, there is a free trial available for 14 days. So now I have Mac OS, I have the newest version. I'm doing, my host application is Photoshop. I'm on Mac and download Dehancer Film for Photoshop, a Lightroom Capture One and Affinity Photo. Uh, 2.4, I'm gonna download this. They provided me with a license to test it out. So now it's downloaded. And now you find a folder that is full of information. You have the different versions. You see here, those are the, with the x86. Those are the Windows versions. And now here we have the Mac version and we want to have the ARM64 or the Mac versions. And we want to install this one. So we double click it, it opens up. Accept, of course. Then you open up Lightroom. If it's already has been open, just you don't have to close it or reopen it again. Then you go to preferences, you go to external editing and there you go to choose. And then we're going to find the answer Lightroom plugin. Here it is. You choose this. Then you can do a preset and save Dehancer as your additional external editor. Then we close. And now I selected five photos I did with Leica cameras. First, I'm going to take this portrait here from my friend Cameron. Cameron is a journalist, a sports journalist who works for CBS and does a lot of NFL and pickleball. And she's also the host of the stadium show for the LA Rams in the SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles. And I think it's very important to look at skin tones and how skin tones behave when using an app like that. But before we start, we need to talk about the color space that Dehancer supports. The Dehancer plugin for Photoshop, Lightroom Classic, Capture One and Affinity Photo currently supports source images in sRGB IEC 61966-2.1 color space. They say other color spaces will be supported as well in the future. It's important that the same color management is consistent throughout the entire process working with Dehancer. 
So before we start, because we cannot work with an original DNG or another RAW file, if you use another camera, we need to export the picture first. Basically Lightroom does that and we need to set the correct export settings. For this, we go into preferences, we go into external settings, and here we need to adjust some stuff. Here it is very important that you set the file format to TIFF, the color space to sRGB, the bit depth to 16 bit. The answer recommends 240 resolution and compression zip. This is if you export in Photoshop. So now if you export into the answer, we also need to set the right color space. So also we export into TIFF. We have the sRGB. We go to 16 bit color space and we have no compression at all. Because we edited now something, we need to also update our preset. So these are basically the color space settings that need to be set up to have the best result in the end. Now we go back and we start working on Cameron's picture. For this, we press into the picture with the right mouse button and then we go edit in the handser. So now we see again our export settings and we now press edit and Lightroom will now create a TIFF file and once it is done, it will open the Hanser and we have now this picture of Cameron in the Hanser. Because we are using it for the first time, we now have to download all the film profiles. So I press update film profiles. It's actually 63 different film stocks. Now we're done. Now I need to activate my copy here. You have two possibilities. You can log in and select uh, your license or I just can enter the license key. For this, I need to confirm my email and put in my license key. This is now activated so I can start working. Cameron's picture. So let's look first at the user interface of the Hunter. On the left side, you have all the presets of the different film stocks that are available. On the right side, you can adjust other settings. So what is the best workflow for working with the Hunter? Best is you use a raw file, as I already mentioned. You export it as a TIFF and then we go to the film stocks. So before we do anything on Cameron's picture, let's go through the different film stocks we have available. To see a preview, you click here. We have here all the different stocks as a list as well. And we can see little preview windows here. I would say I just click through those and so you can see the different looks of those film stocks. So back to the original digital photo. Let's also check the presets that are coming when you first open the Hanser. So I like the Fuji Relia 500D preset. This really gives for me a, a very cool film look. And what I like especially about that is that we can see that we have a little glow here in the lights. We have a strong desaturation. And if we press here on the right side to one to one, we can go closer and now we can see also really, really organic grain. So when we go here on the right side, adjustments, we can go through the different categories and the different things you can do. In the film developer, we can activate this and then we have contrast boost, gamma correction, color separation and color boost. To emulate the film-like compressed tone range, the Hunter invented the film compression tool. It lets you fine-tune the redistribution of the highlights. The resulting image looks more analog and becomes more flexible for further manipulation with exposure, contrast, film print profiles, etc. So if you activate this, you can immediately see there is something happening. The expand tool provides a separate manual control for black and white points in relation to the output color space. If we activate this and we start playing around with this, it gives an impression of more contrast. Optical printing is the last stage of analog production. And when you do an optical print, it is very important which paper you use. The Hunter also has four different simulations of papers. I actually like this one most. The color hat, settings, 
I'm not going to touch because this is one they already have activated. The color head settings are the CMY color head and printing toning. Subtractive CMY color head is based up on the analog color correction tool integrated in photo enlargers. The similar method is used in the printer lights, a special device for optical movie printing to a positive film. Both have the same principle, changing the color of light used for print exposure. In the answer, the color head tool is represented D3 complementary color pairs YMC, BGR or commonly used CMY RGB, combining both analog devices into one digital tool. Yellow blue, magenta green, cyan red. The effect of changing these parameters corresponds respectively to their labels. And then the probably most obvious thing in emulating analog photos, the film grain. If you go back to Lightroom, we can also add grain as an effect. But this is basically just putting a grain effect layer over the picture which is not the thing the Hanser does. They say real grain on film isn't just overlaid on top of an image, but in fact the image itself entirely consists of grain. The Hanser literally reconstructs the shot using the local color and brightness characteristics along with the complex physical modeling of a film emulation. There are two film types and two processing modes available in the Hanser. Film type negative, grain is more pronounced in the highlights and the image has slightly higher micro contrast which is more typical for negative films. Positive grain uses the classic algorithm that reproduces a softer grain which is less pronounced in the highlights and is more typical for positive films. So if you go back and forth between those two, I actually like the positive better because it's a little bit more reduced. So if you look at the whole picture, yeah, it's both cool. And then we have the processing mode. The original analog is the original type of grain that requires more processing power, but results in a lifelike simulation. And if you go digital, experimental, let's go a little bit closer again. The digital is a high performance simplified grain that may be useful for dithering tasks, for example, to eliminate the posterization for low resolution project and draft rendering. I would not recommend using that. So we go back to analog and now let's go with positive. You then of course can adjust several different detail settings. You can adjust the size of the grain, the amount, the resolution, the shadows, the midtones, the highlights and the color. I won't touch that because the enhancers spend a lot of time recreating the real film stocks and I don't want to mess that up here. So the next category is halation. Halation is the film emulsion effect visible as the local red-orange halos around the bright light source, special highlights and consisting edges. Also, halation may produce a well-pronounced red glare in the mid-tones, mostly affecting the skin tones. I will also not touch that because, again, I want to simulate this special Fuji film stock. Because it has an effect on the skin, let's play around a little bit with that. It really creates a beautiful skin tone. The next category is Bloom. Bloom emulates the combined effect of light dispersion on the boundaries of contrasting image areas which originates in the optical system and then amplified in the emulsion layers. Notice that Bloom has a little in common with optical soft effects as it appears only around light sources. So for example, we have here this section on the hair and if I turn off Bloom, this will disappear a little bit. I also will not mess around with those settings. And then last but not least, we have vignette settings. This is classical. We have the same in Lightroom as well. So we can go with a stronger vignette or we can have, a, let's say, negative vignette. I will also just not touch that. So when you have your final look, you press OK. And we go back into Lightroom and the Hanser then saves all the settings we have, burns it into the TIFF file and exports it back to Lightroom. And now we have the original, which is here marked as copy. It's not a copy. It's just a virtual copy of the original file. And then we have our processed 
Dehance her film look, which I really think is absolutely beautiful and it really looks like an analog picture. I think it's very organic and I'm absolutely fascinated by the possibilities we have here. Before we move on, let me remind you to please like and subscribe. Thank you. Let's check out this picture from 2022 from the Pride Parade on Hollywood Boulevard. I choose this because of the rich colors. So let's again edit in the enhancer. Be sure that we have all the export settings right. We have. And then we export it. It creates the TIFF file. And we now can go through the different films again. And then we'll pick a winner. <music> I went with the Kodak Vision 350D, but I'm going to tweak that a little bit because here I really like the washed out colors. It gives that retro look, which I really like, but I will enhance that a little bit. Take away a little bit of the contrast. It will make it a little bit brighter. I'm maybe going to choose a paper here and I want to go a little bit harder here on the grain. So if we go a little bit closer, I want to add here a little bit more grain, still give it a high resolution. And here I'm going to stick with the negative. Okay, I'm done. And now if you put those two next to each other, we can now see a big difference, of course, because yeah, we added a lot of grain. But what I want to show you, what I really like is especially in the out of focus parts here. This, of course, because it's so sharp, it's a very good lens. We have a lot of details. We have a wonderful bouquet here. But here with the film grain, it really gives it, I don't know why, it is in the, in the, in the out of focus part especially, it gives it this really, really organic film look. I really like that a lot. Also here in the blues, of course, when we do digital pictures, we want to have this clear blue. We don't want to have any grain at all. We want to have those, those really clear colors. And of course, when we add a film look or if we would shoot it with film, it would have that grain. But I really think the grain looks so real. So we could now play with that. Let's go to the original file and add digital grain. And if we now put those two next to each other, we see that, I hope this is still visible on YouTube, we can see that especially here in this glossy kind of Lametta thing, this looks much more like a real film shot. This is a digital shot that put a grain on top of it. And the same here, when you look at the different colors up here, here we really have the reproduced grain in the picture. Here it's just put on top here in the yellow parts. There's a big, big difference when you're using the enhancer. If you want to have a closer look at those pictures and the other ones we're about to edit, please check out my Instagram, LinkedIn or my Twitter or X. I post photos that I use and do in these videos on all those platforms. And while we're at it, also follow me on TikTok, where I post additional content to my YouTube videos. So let's check out the next picture. It's a winter picture. Again, edit in the enhancer. All correct. And because it's a winter picture, we have a lot of white in it. So this will change a lot in characteristics when I go through the different film stocks. <laughs> Here I really like the first one, which gives it a really <laughs> 70s kind of look. And if you go here and maybe change the paper, I really like it with the Fuji paper. And I would also add a little bit of grain here. Yeah, looks fantastic. So if you put those two next to each other, of course we can see now, especially in this part, we can see this really clear digital photo and here of course. Uh, very, very organic kind of analog look. I really like this picture. And again, in the out of focus parts here on the on the left side, this really looks like an old picture. I really have the feeling it's a picture I took in the 1990s. <laughs> and yeah, it looks very, very organic to me. Let's say by now you're interested in trying Dehancer yourself. 
As I told you, there is a two-week free trial available. And if after that period of time you are ready to buy your own license, please use the code STAYCURIOUS to get 10% off. And I'm going to get a small commission as well, just to be open about that. Then I have this picture I took in October when doing my first Q3 video. I was at the Olympic Park in Munich and I already worked a little bit on that picture. I can't show you how it looks with no editing. This is like this. So I worked a little bit on the contrasts and I want to now export this into Dehancer. Can check, yeah, it's all correct. This time I go through the different presets that Dehancer provides. Again, I am with Fuji Chrome, and here I maybe add a little bit more exposure. Oh, too much. We're losing our information, the highlights. If we go to the different film stocks now, we can see that there's a lot of strange stuff happening with this. <laughs> This is a very extreme high contrast picture. And if we, I choose here the Kodak Ektachrome E100. And if we put those next to each other, we do not see that much difference. But that's probably because I already, in the original settings, pushed the picture very much. If we now do the same and I just do no processing at all on this picture, let's check out if it would look differently. On the left side, we see the processed one. On the right side, we see the original digital, not edited photo. And again, we can see changes in the color and the grain. And again, I would say it's not that extreme, but it really looks like an analog photograph. Okay, so last picture I'm going to look at is a still image from one of my films that I shot in Portugal in 2020. This is actually the key art of the film, which became the poster. This is also a shot that is very, very high contrast and that's already edited a lot. So this is the original one. And this is the edited one, so the highlights are brought down, so we have we can see the sky. Let's also export that into the answer and see if we can have the feeling of an analog vacation picture. <music> I actually liked Cine still the most. So if you now go a little bit closer, I'm a little bit grain addicted, add a little bit more grain. And now it really looks like a picture shot with film. And if I put them next to each other, we can now see that the overall atmosphere is a little bit different. And if you go closer to the faces, we can see that, of course, the digital one is very clear and the analog one really looks like an analog one. I think this is absolutely amazing and I'm totally blown away by all the possibilities that this plugin gives me. Here I have the five pictures I shot with digital Leica cameras and Leica glass that I edited out of Lightroom with the Dehanter plugin to give them a true film-like look. I'm stunned by the results and the simplicity of achieving them. Let me also mention the iOS app from Dehancer. It's a separate app that has almost the same functionality as the desktop version. It works absolutely independent and is no need of another photo app on your iPhone. You can optimize the photos you took with your iPhone and give them a unique film-like look. I think this makes your iPhone an even more versatile point-and-shoot camera than it already is. If you're interested in how to achieve a film-like look by using a vintage lens, check out this video. Or if you want to dive into more Leica stuff, check out this video. Stay curious! Mm -hmm.